Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. This is your Average Guy, John Corelli. I just wanted to give you all <clears throat> an update. Still a little hoarse. <clears throat> Excuse me. But in a much better place than I was about 30 hours ago when I was freaking out. Um, my hives have lessened. Uh, I'm still pretty pink. I'm still covered about 80% of my body. But things are getting better. Um, but I think uh, I had just cause to be a little freaked out. Uh, yesterday. Um, after two stints in uh, Kaiser's Urgent Care and another stint in the ER at Lutheran Medical Center, I was uh, not getting answers, and that's really what was freaking me out. Um, so, as I, if you want to watch the last video, and t I told you the entire eight days I had been through, we're on day nine today. Um, you know, wasp stings that went rogue treatment, antibiotics, it also went rogue. I apparently am allergic to everything. <laughs> i got to be really careful. Um, didn't have this issue when I was a kid. I had some uh, seasonal allergies, and now about 20 years ago, like I said, found out I was allergic to penicillin. Now I'm probably allergic to any myosin that's out there. Um, allergic to wasps and bees, too. So uh, not, not like anaphylaxically, but if that's a word. Not like if I get stung by a bee, I'm not going to go into anaphylaxic shock. But... I am what is considered the 10%, um, how did they put it, a uh, strong local reaction, I believe it was. It's like, if I get, a, I, I get a bee sting or a wasp sting, my, that part of my body is swelling and unpleasant within 24 hours. Having said all that, <clears throat> um, I'm also not a litigious person to explain away yesterday's video. And I don't want to explain it away. I want to explain it, though. Um, I am not a litigious person. I try I have a hard, fast policy of trying to stay out of courtrooms, actually. <laughs> I've been very lucky. I've never had to put my hand on a bullshit Bible and testify for anything. I've done jury duty, but I was I never I had to be on a jury. Um, you know, I went in uh, and dealt with some speeding tickets when I was like 19, 20 years old because I was a dumbass. Uh, but here, you know, when, when you're 56 and you have a lot of responsibilities, like I do, I'm not... I'm not patting myself on the back, but I have a 26-year-old with autism that lives with me. I have a 19-year-old trans child that lives with me, and I want to get these guys to a good place. Uh, I don't know if my 26-year-old will ever be independent. I think this is a long-haul thing that I want to be, I want to stay as healthy as I can as long as I can to be for that, here for that kid as long as I can. As for the trans child, I am hoping in a couple of years when she finishes college, she will go out on her own, but that's a kind of a contract I've written with myself where... I want to help this kid get through college because it's way harder now than it was in the 90s when I graduated college to get through and start your life. Um, you know, the greed in this system has everyone scraping. And so I'm just doing my best to support my kid. My plan is to pay for this kid's college, let this kid live here probably rent free, um, let her uh, do her best in school, which is awesome. She's 4.0. And uh, I want that to continue. Hey, these are your, this is 19, 20, 21. These should be fun but hardworking years. Go make friends. Go get high. Go get drunk. Kick ass in school. Do all of that. If you don't have to work during it like I did, all the better. Um, I think she's got plenty of character. I don't think she needs a job to build character. I think uh, this kid, I'm not worried about her at all. So, having said all that, back to yesterday's video. Um... Here was the main reason that I, and I may have explained in the video, but for the, and I'm not a generally panicky person. I'm not the calmest person always. Sometimes I fly off the handle. Sometimes I overreact to stuff, but I, I also am very calm in situations as well. Like I was saying in the video yesterday, I was, I was a model patient. Um, I said, I like let that guy go ahead of me in the ER when I wasn't feeling great, but I knew he was feeling worse. Uh, so the answers I wasn't getting, the answer and the main question that I wasn't getting, and this is what threw me into a panic, was, will this get worse before it gets better? And all the, I talked to at least three, maybe four medical people, and they all said, no, it shouldn't get any worse. And it got worse. And that's why I freaked out, right? Because if you hear, oh, okay, this is going to look worse, but it will get better if you keep, you know, on your prednisone and antihistamines, you'll get there. But I, I wasn't told that. I was, I was like, I mean, one time, the last guy that saw me, the, the, uh, not the attending, but the uh, intern, great guy. I mean, all these people were wonderful. I just didn't get the answers I needed, but they were 
all compassionate, professional people. I have no, I have, for except for my little issue at not getting answers, the answer I needed, uh, I have nothing but respect for these people, for the entire medical profession that, that I dealt with, honestly. Um, but <laughs> not getting that answer and saying, hey, and then asking it quite clearly, is this a will get worse before it gets better situation? Asking it like that, which I thought was a clear way to ask it and not getting that answer. And, and often, or just having it either not answered or said, or said, no, no, this shouldn't get any worse. You're taking all the stuff you've been taking for X amount of time, a day or two, should get better. That's why I went into the panic. And as you can see uh, from that video only 30 hours ago, I was feeling like shit. Uh, I was low on sleep, but I was covered. Like I said, 80%, I'm still 80%, but they were much redder. I was feeling hot, itchy, and sometimes in pain. Um, even I'm not taking any pain medication, but still, the symptoms were getting worse. And that's and when I and when you're told they're not going to get worse and they keep getting worse, well, you might freak out and go to the ER, and you might freak out <laughs> and and put out a video on YouTube that maybe wasn't the best idea, but it was where I was at. And this is an average guy, and as you guys know. I'll often uh, just let you know what's going on in my life, let you know my opinions on stuff. That's why it's called Average Guy Opinions. Um, but I'm better now, um, actually uh, way better. And so, and uh, this will continue to get better. I've still got three more days on prednisone and uh, Allegra and Pepsid for some reason. I think I may have mentioned that in the last video, maybe not, but that has something to do with helping your body get to where it needs to go in this situation. Uh, looking forward, what do I have to? I have to be super careful. I'm gonna get a bee sting kit uh, and a wasp sting kit that I'll probably carry in my car with me as part of my first aid stuff, just in case shit goes fucking pear shaped, as the Brits like to say. Um, I will be wearing long sleeves when I do yard work. I will be more careful about that. Uh, I will have an EpiPen. I will talk to my doctor, and make sure I have an EpiPen because if things get really bad, I mean, I I'm starting to like I said, I'm starting to think I'm allergic to everything. Um, you know, it's a, Hey, I, I've got a great life, a great life. And I know you guys have heard me say that. If you, if you've listened to this and watched my videos, um, you know, you know, how I know how lucky I am. I've gotten to do a wonder, wonderful, amazing things in this life. I've gotten to jump out of an airplane twice. I've been to India. I've been to Europe. You know, I've, I've, uh, I, I've got to raise these two wonderful kids. I, I've had a great time all, along the way. I've gotten to do a lot of really cool shit. I've climbed 14ers. I've psh, run 10Ks. I've done really cool shit in my life. I mean, that's, those are some of the highlights, I suppose. But, you know, it's been a great life for 56 years. And I'm greedy. I want 30 more. <laughs> so so that's why I went into that panic yesterday. I don't want to die. And like I said, I got responsibilities. Um, these kids are big. And I'm it, I'm it for them. I mean, if they have to go to their mother, it's going to be tough. She's she's a great woman, but she doesn't need that. She, she's got enough going on. And her plate is quite full as well. So to explain that video, that's where I was. That's where my mindset was. Um, and obviously, when you're in physical distress, your mindset changes. You know, that's why torture works, right? <laughs> you beat a guy up enough, he will lose his mindset and he'll tell you things he was maybe trained not to tell you. So that's where I was. Uh, this is where I am. Things are looking forward and good for me. I appreciate uh, And I haven't checked any of the comments on the video. Uh, hopefully I didn't s s freak too many people out. My mom got like 30 seconds in. She's a regular watcher. She's like, I couldn't watch it, John. I go, I get it. <laughs> I get it. It was, it was pretty dark. Um, Looking forward, uh, like I said, got three more days of meds. On Saturday night, I go down to Florence where I host a show, a comedy show called Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. It's kind of a whips and chains type of event. Um, it's there's a, it's very interesting. It's a, a couple I've gotten to know and like, uh, Doug and Pamela Mae Sterner. They're Doug's 74, Pamela's in her 60s. And uh, they are very open about their sexual stuff. And... Uh, <laughs> They do. They have a BDS, BDSM room in their basement. I have never partaken because I'm not into that, but I like them. They're they're not, they're they're they do their weird stuff, but they're perfectly intelligent, kind people, and they let me host their shows and be on their shows sometimes. So this will be interesting. I'll probably open up with I'm going to host it and open at 15 minutes, probably mostly sexual deviant stuff, and uh, I'll be near a supermax uh, uh, federal. 
detention facility. So that'll be interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm in on 10 minutes. That's what's going on. I thank you all for your support. And if I freaked anyone out, I'm sorry. And if I got a little uh, litigious, I'm also sorry. But that's where my mindset was at. And sometimes that's what you go with. All right, guys. Have a great day, night, afternoon. Stay cool out there. It's fucking hot in Denver. It's going to be a very hot weekend. I hope you guys are all safe. And uh, be kind. Be kind to the people that are out there in this. Be kind to the homeless. If you can give them a bottle of water. You know, if you see a guy cooking in 100, 100 degree heat, give him a bottle of water. Give him a dollar to get a bottle of water. Do something nice. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, talk to you soon.